Well, we've had our ups and downs, but let's get back to the Arab sentiment because I think that a lot is misconstrued. Like I said, when we see images of Gaddafi, yes, or when we see images of Hosni Mubarak, yes, you know, when he comes to trial, he's on his, you know, hospital stretcher. bed stretcher, yes, in a cage. Yeah, it actually um, seems absurd to us. It seems self-inflicted. It seems that somebody else is pulling the triggers, and it causes a certain sentiment. Okay. Uh, Either Mubarak is an Egyptian or a super Egyptian. Which one do you want to treat him? If he's Egyptian, he's treated like every Egyptian. For 30 years, he was a super Egyptian. Good, but now he's <laughs> Egyptian. He, he, he steps down from power and he comes back to the, to the, uh, to the normal Egyptian citizenship life mm -hmm. and he's a normal citizen. We, we haven't given amnesty to any leadership in Egypt before, so uh, unless they give him amnesty and it's doable, it's, it's in the hands of any, any uh, president of the republic mm -hmm. according to law, but then he has to go trial to trial and then he has to be sentenced and then he can be amnesty or not if he, uh, if he ever is going to be accused. Because everybody can, be, can, can appear in, in court mm -hmm. and defend himself and, he is free, and he, if he is uh, innocent, he's going to be freed. Well, isn't it a little crazy or absurd uh, that before anything happens, whether it's Saddam Hussein, whether it is Gaddafi, they're offered amnesty by various other Muslim countries and a safe passage. Uh, but uh, I don't know who, who, who issues the amnesty. But the well, people I'll tell you, Idi Amin yeah. has been Saudi Arabia for a very long yes, time. Yeah, but, uh, but things are changing nowadays and, and everybody, we, you know, we don't accept That's the not notion. That's my answer. My, my point is, why is it that the, uh, they are offered a safe passage? It was an idea to avoid something that happened like what happened in Libya. If, if there is a risk of, of immense violence and of massacres, then there is always a goodwill of, of a friendly country who wants to save a country a, a, a disaster. And uh, I think I should, uh, we should all uh, regard what, what these countries do by giving free passage to... Do you think that Idi Amin should have gotten safe passage to Saudi Arabia? Do you prefer that the uh, uh, Ugandans kill themselves? Do you prefer to see, wha to see a massacre like what's happened in other countries? Do you not think that the Ugandans should have actually seen Idi Amin brought to trial after what he did? Why don't you should ask the Ugandans what they prefer? Fair enough. Why should, we, why should we replace the will of the Ugandans? But I tell you, the Egyptians thought that Mubarak can go to trial, as like anybody. The idea of a stretcher or not, if he is in such a critical medical condition, he can still, if he wants, not to attend. This is, this is the regulation, of course, that applies to, for, to any person, uh, even, even a, a super Egyptian, if you want to call him. But he is Egyptian, and I think he's proud to be Egyptian. And, and I'm, I'm confident that anybody, including Hosni Mubarak, who have witnessed the revolution in Egypt and, and saw how peaceful it was and how the people resisted, and, and those very civilized people who cleaned Tahrir Square after they left and the way they did it, and they didn't, they didn't do it because, because they wanted something uh, bad. They just wanted uh, a free Egypt and a developed modern Egypt. It's not a bad thing. Was Egypt not free and developed before this? Developed, well, yes. Egypt was under development, and we were not advancing as we wanted us to be. We were even considered ourselves reversing, uh, free to a certain extent, but not as free as we wanted it to be. Okay, let's get to this. I really want to know. When um, we discuss the various Arab countries, mm -hmm. um, like I said again and again, you are from Egypt. You have your finger on the pulse of these countries. You speak the same language, which mm -hmm. we clearly don't. What is the Arab sentiment in terms of what is going on in the Middle East right now? Because apparently the next country who's about to undergo this revolution is Syria. But we'll get to that later. So what is the Arab sentiment? Do they really want change? And when I talk about the Arab sentiment, I'm referring to Middle Eastern countries. I'm not referring to the Gulf states. The whole Middle Eastern countries, including the Gulf states. I would immediately un answer by, by asking a small question. Sure. Who were the coalition against Gaddafi? from the Arab countries. Who joined? Were there any Arab countries or not? Yes, there were. So what is there in the Arab countries is that everybody was with the sentiments of the people and of the majority of the people. We have seen what happened in Tunis. And if you don't recall, I can remind you that there were a lot of manifestations in front of the Tunisian embassy in Cairo. Hmm. Tunisians and Egyptians together were, were, were having these manifestations. They wanted to say that Yes, we are happy. We share your, 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 uh, your values. And even they, they shunted slogans, uh, Egypt next, Egypt next. 
This is in Egypt. So this is how we, we felt about Tunisia. What happened in Libya was, was, was very difficult to, to accept, but we have seen some Arab countries even moving towards the military action and taking part in oosting the regime that the Libyans were refusing. Hmm. So the sentiment is, of course, in the right of every Arab nation to decide for itself. If you want this regime or that regime, hmm. this type of democracy or that type of democracy. And by the way, in Egypt, we haven't yet decided if we are going to have a presidential or a parliamentary regime. So why should we accept that others judge on what we should choose? So what happens to countries like Jordan, for instance, which is a monarchy? What happens to countries like Syria, which actually, again, have had a dictator, and then it's been passed on to his son, or almost? What are the people over there, are they actually going to rise up? Well, I think that, th that there is a huge, huge uh, uh, rise up and build up in Syria. And the problem in Syria is that there are so many um, so many uh, reported uh, and why is it and quite frankly yeah. that countries which certain superpowers but, do not support uh, but please leave the Arab League the chance to do something the Arab League is moving on Syria the Secretary General of the Arab League visited Syria I think uh, once and now there is an mm -hmm. Arab delegation going for, uh, from several Arab min uh, foreign ministers including Egypt to try to remedy the situation in Libya so changes happen in Tunisia changes happen in um, uh, Libya, changes happen in Egypt. Changes do not happen in Saudi Arabia, which is the worst uh, monarchy uh, uh, and are dictatorship. Are you going to substitute yourself for the Saudi population and judge the regime? And if they are happy or not? Have you we, been there? We, we accept. Have you been there? Yes, of course I've been so there. So have I. We have to accept that every country is decided by the w will of the people. And then when the people are upset, we, sh we show the example. The majority of the people can go down on the street and make the change they, they want and they can force Isn't the Isn't it a case of pick and choose whatever suits you? No, it's the idea of not intervening and not forcing a will on another people. Are why you really saying to me why that do there you is want no us, intervention? Why do you want us to force the Saudis towards a regime they, they probably don't want or they want? I'm not talking about whether the Saudis want a change or not. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that a regime change happens the regime With change always happens. From other parties. Let's from, just, from outside. Yes, absolutely. When there is... When a, there is a will, when there is a will and when there is a movement, then other parties intervene. Uh, listen, That's just don't forget that Britain is a monarchy and a democratic monarchy. Don't forget that Sweden is a monarchy. Are the, you comparing the, Britain and Sweden to Saudi Arabia? Why don't you let everybody build his own system and get there? Because eventually, yes. while they are building their system... But don't forget there that will come a breaking point. But don't forget that, that the British monarchy was occupying the Saudi uh, peninsula. Of course. Okay. And we all know that uh, the actual monarchy in Jordan was actually the Hashemites, which were the yes. monarchs. So we know our history. Let's not go there. Let me tell you something, and this is important to, to bring here. Egypt, during the King uh, Farouk, mm -hmm. was a democracy. Egypt at the monarchy, we were a democratic monarchy. We were no different from the British system. Uh, we had our peculiarities, but we were a very, very democratic Egypt. And then we got the revolution into a republic. And it's the Republicans, or the republic, uh, that changed the system because of adopting a certain given economic system that didn't help very much. Uh, so the economic disparity is what caused this? Which one? The last revolution, yes. But Not this one? the last revolution in Egypt, but not the first one. The first one was caused by, it was uh, the, the army movement against the king because they did not like the British involvement in the sovereignty of the Egyptian decision making. Let's come back to Pakistan. Yes. You're saying Pakistan does not have the ingredients for a revolution. I, ha I think that Pakistan has a very good ingredient, which is good called change. democracy. And that if you want to change anything, you can go to the poll and change and choose whomever you want. You can choose any leader of any party you choose to and put him in power. This is democracy. In Egypt, our will in the time of Mubarak was not reflected in the polls. And we are not the only ones who are saying this. But I don't hear any voices in Pakistan that says that our will was not reflected. So That's true. you have to learn to accept the will of the majority 
And this is what we in Egypt have to learn as well, and everybody in the world. The majority of, of the population will decide, and we have to accept. We can be upset. We can still not like it, but mm -hmm. we have to accept it. Because we have to accept to live together all in one country. And, of course, we have to respect the will of the others and to abide by it. Um, as a diplomat here in Pakistan, yes. it's challenging times, quite clearly. Um, how do you see Pakistan in terms of the society, the evolution? You're saying that you don't see drastic changes happening, and if they do, they will be through the polls, correct? Mm -hmm. Having said that, what is the perception of Pakistan in the Arab countries, specifically Egypt? Uh, I'm sure it's being monitored very closely. I was afraid that you asked me something different because uh -huh. I've been only here for seven weeks. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so but, but asking about the image no. of Pakistan in Egypt, this is something I can tell you easily. Pakistan is looked upon as an important stabilizing factor in this region of Asia. Pakistan is looked upon as our, our eastern border, the strong Islamic country. The eastern border, the... the, the, the the powerful eastern border Islamic country that would complement with our western border coming Egypt and, and, and the Maghreb into saving the whole Islamic world. We consider, yes, we consider so Pakistan. So it's actually looked at as a bastion yes. of the Islamic states. Yes, of course. The front line. And, and not only a bastion, as a lighthouse for an Islamic democracy, if possible. Exactly like Turkey. Y you do not imagine how much the Pakistani role is appreciated in the Arab world, and the Pakistanis themselves are so much appreciated in Egypt. We consider Pakistan is, is, is a parallel to, to us in, in this region, a lighthouse in the region, a, a bastion for, 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 uh, for power and, and stabilizing. how do you see the relationship? I mean, I have a minute left <coughs> to sum it up. How do you see the relationship between Egypt and Pakistan developing in the years to come? Uh, developing economic. in? It's an economic relationship. It's a relationship which is fundamentally also Islamic. It's a Muslim thing. It's a non-alignment thing. It's everything. But don't mm. forget that we, our relations date back since 1948. Mm. We exchanged diplomatic relations in 1948. Our ambassador to Pakistan uh, presented his credentials on January 1949. Uh, so we did back long ago. It has always been good. And better. If I'm not incorrect, I believe Israel recognized us before you did. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Israel did not exist before 48. But if so I'm not if mistaken, it's a matter of days, fine. It's not a problem. Uh, and I don't uh, recall. I wasn't alive that. I wasn't alive. And I didn't. Uh, I didn't concentrate on, on the difference between us and Israel, but there is no comparison of the volume of relations we have with you and whatever Israelis could have with you. And uh, in addition to this, we should not forget that uh, we are building the relations, and my obligation here is to make a, a, a very good advancement of this relation. It's my duty to guarantee that our relations intensifies every day more, and I'm going to be here to do it. So rest assured, I guarantee you I'll do all my best to make these relations at its top level. Well, we wish you all the best and thank you for taking out the time to speak to us. Nazreen, you were talking about our conversation about Arab Mumalik. What are the changes there? And what is the change of that change? Then it happened that when people talk about Pakistan, they need to talk about it. They need to talk about some special things. In which there is a change of change. Besides, the most important thing is that those people who have the right to vote in the government, the right to vote in Pakistan, so here, the important thing is that the people who are saying that they will not come. If the people who are saying that they will come, then it will be a peaceful means. It will come, but it will come to the government. Because here, the government is already here. What is the thing about this? Do your right to exercise your right to vote. Then the government will come. Besides, this is the thing that where the government is and Pakistan is related to the government, the government is very old. اور پوری کوشش یہی ہوگی کہ یہ تعلقات آگے بڑھیں اور ان میں سے بہتری آئے اور یہ بھی کہا کہ پاکستان وہ مخصوص اسلامی ملک ہے 
جس کو کہا گیا ہے کہ وہ بیسٹن ہے بیکن آف لائٹ ہے مختلف عرب ممالک کے لیے کیونکہ یہ ایک جمہوری ملک ہے یہاں پہ جمہوریت جو ہے کافی ایسے سے چل یہاں پہ کوئی تیس سال تک ڈکٹیٹر بن کے نہیں بیٹھتا آنے والے دنوں میں کیا آتا ہے وہ تو دیکھیں گے لیکن ہمیشہ کی طرح امید یہی ہے کہ انشاءاللہ انشاءاللہ پاکستان بیٹھتے کی طرح کی جائے تھانکی فور واشن سی ایس